long before uh, sunrooms and roofs and uh, uh, paver patios, thousands of years before carpentry. People were painting their caves, so we've been around for a long time and we're not going anywhere. So what we're trying to do today is basically, and we're going to stick around, and uh, basically we're going to teach you everything we know about painting and uh, uh, to the point where you don't even need us. So um, we're, we're basically giving away all the secrets. Um, some dictionaries uh, refer to painters as non-violent home improvement workers, which when I think of painters, that's exactly what I think of. Uh, because most painters I know are rather passive, so that makes sense. But the truth is, it's because we don't destroy anything. All we do is make things beautiful. And, we, and, and there's instant gratification in that. So that's why you have some painters that are absolute geniuses, brilliant people, and they just love to paint because you get to see what you do every day. And so that's what I really like about it. My name is Eric Morud. I'm the owner of True North Painting. We do interior, exterior, uh, residential and commercial work. I started painting 12 years ago when I went to St. John's. We did it in the summer. Most painters start in college and basically, uh, you know, being a rock star wasn't working out. I'm not good looking enough, so I figured I'll be a painter. So um, I really, really enjoy it. So that's why I want to share with you what I've learned. So we're going to cover a lot. You know, in 45 minutes, I could teach you how to do walls, ceilings, trim. I mean, painting isn't rocket science. I could probably teach you how to paint a Home Depot in about 45 minutes. So. Um, and then we're going to leave some time for uh, questions um, throughout. So if you have a question, feel free to just throw it out there and, and we'll try to cover as much as we can. So um, we're going to cover how to pick out interior paint. Uh, we'll talk about why does it take eight coats to make something red. We'll cover out um, and how do, you, how do you reduce that to two or three coats. How do I store paint? What is a paint booger, which is actually a technical term. So um, what does the finish look, why does the finish look different on one wall versus the other and how do you get that consistency on an interior? So we're really going to focus on interior. Um, but you know, there's a lot of basic techniques and we're going to cover quite a bit. But, um, but this isn't rocket science, so um, you know, there are other ways to do this. I mean, there's a lot of, in fact, even within our company, we, uh, during the peak of the season we have 45 painters and not everyone does it the exact same. So these are, these are kind of the way I was, I was taught. So, um, so let's get started. So basically what you want to do is make sure you have clothes that you can ruin because even the best painters don't usually go home like that. They start like that, but they don't end like that. So let's be real. Make sure you're not wearing your Sunday's best. The other thing you want to do is make sure you have a drop cloth. So many people don't use a drop cloth. And it's un unbelievable. <laughs> um, now when you're doing interior, you can't use a straight up canvas drop cloth. And I wouldn't recommend using plastic. I would use what's called a butyl, B-U-T-Y-L, butyl drop cloth, because if the paint spills, it's gonna stop. It's not gonna go through. And paint spills, it's just the way it is. I mean, you, you back up, you're not paying attention, or whatever it is, or the dog, the cat, the kid, uh, knocks it over. So you wanna make sure when you're painting interiors that you don't paint the floor too. So, um, you want to get your butyl drop cloth. Um, to do a good job, you need to use a lot of paint. So don't be afraid to take, like some people say, well, I don't drip. It's like, well, I don't know, I'm a professional, I, I drip because I want to use as much paint as I can without it getting sloppy. So use tape for all, you know, for, for goodness sakes, use tape and use enough of it. Um, we usually typically use an inch and a half and because when you're rolling, when you're coming down, there's splatter that comes off, and there's just no way around that. If, if you're doing a good job, you're using a lot of paint. So you want to make sure you're not only covering your baseboard at the little spot that it is, but you also kind of want to have a little bit of safety. So I recommend using an inch and a half at least. Um, the other thing to consider when you're picking out your tape is, you know, there's the blue tape that runs like $40 a roll or 8 bucks or something like that. Then you have your white tape and you have your frog tape. So what you, want to use, what you want to decide is how long is it going to take you to do the project. And today I'm going to teach you how to do it faster than you're probably used to doing it. So if white tape is fine as long as you get the project done within a week or you know, a day or something like that. If you're going to have it on for a long time, then you want to use like a blue tape. Um, but I'm going to teach you how to do, we're, we're going to get you back to white tape. So, but if you have questions like that, make sure you can discuss that with, with a knowledgeable paint store um, operator because they can kind of help you with, with what products to use. Um, 
Okay, so the next thing you got to do before you start painting is prep the walls, okay? Usually that means nail pops, gouges, um, where the kids had fights and hit something. You, um, you got to use your putty knife. It's really simple. You see your gouge, you get just regular spackle, simple stuff, and make sure when you open up the can and you use it to cover it right away too, because it dries out really, really fast. So pretty simple, you put it on, like that, let it dry. Use as little as you can to fill the hole though because you don't want a huge, you know, you don't want to have a ton that's outside of the hole because you're going to have to sand it off and it's not always easy to sand that smooth. Nail pops, don't always fix them in my opinion because if it's, if it's a real obvious one and it really looks terrible, you want to fix it, right? You hammer it back in or you screw it in. But if it's a small blip and you can live with it, I would recommend leaving it. You have to make that decision because if you hammer that baby in and then all of a sudden you got this big hole, then you got to spackle over it. Well, every single time you paint something, you have a little bit, just like this wall, you have a little bit of stipple, right? So now you're basically starting over and now you're going to have another coat of paint on the stippled part, on the stuff that's already got stipple and then you have your new area that's completely smooth. Now you're going to have even more. So if it's small, it actually looks better to leave the nail pop. So you just have to kind of decide what you want to do there. Um, after you have the, the, uh, the spackle, you sand it, then touch it up real quick with your paint so you have a little bit of stipple on there so it's not completely smooth. But if you respackle your whole wall in like 100 spots, you're going to see it's going to look like a cheetah. So I'd recommend not <laughs> a painted wall cheetah, that is. Um, okay, so then we've got our nail pops fixed. Any questions so far on the prep part? So far, okay. Like, uh, you can either, well, interior wise, you don't need to use primer necessarily because all paint is on the scale of primers is kind of primer. You know, so interior, you're not quite as worried about adhesion. Just, just put some. Absolutely. What I would recommend is using the paint that you're going to use. So, like, let's say you're getting ready to paint, like right now. Okay, we, we have to get our roller out. Um, you know, you, get, you open up the paint bucket for the first time. I would hit all those spots first because they're going to dry in like 10 minutes anyway. At least you have a little bit of a base on there. Some people use primer. Personally, I like using the paint that I'm going to use because it's going to match with what I'm putting on. Um, good question, though. So then you got to choose your roller. So if you go to a paint store, you'll see there's a quarter, in, there's a foam, there's a quarter inch, there's a three eighths inch, there's a half inch, there's a three quarter, then there's an inch, and then there's an inch and a quarter, and then there's an inch and a half. For interior painting, I recommend uh, three eighths as the smallest, that's this one, or half inch, or three quarter if you have a lot of experience. Because when you have more, you're gonna have more paint, and it's gonna be harder to get it even. So I would say for most, um, dedicated DIYers, I would go with half, just because it's kind of in the middle. Um, the, the, the larger, the more paint it's going to hold, but it's also going to leave bigger stipple. You know, so that can really affect you know, the way the wall looks. And if you're trying to cover up imperfections, you, know, you want more stipple too. So you kind of have to, yes? That's a great question. It usually helps them make more money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how, much, what do you, how much difference? Every painter has their preference. It, personally, I like really close to the bottom, but not the worst. I want something that's going to work, you know, that's not going to shed, and then I throw it away. So I don't buy a $15 roller and clean it because the amount of time it takes to clean it, I could buy a new one. You know, so I'm kind of thinking that way. But so you want to prep your roller. Um, that's a great question because I was going to cover this and I forgot. So when you, when you get your new fancy roller from Home Depot, Lowe's, Sherwin-Williams, don't forget about Hirschfields, you, you take your tape, right? And you basically roll the entire thing with tape. Okay, you get it stuck on there really good. And then you take it off and look at all that extra fuzz that's going to come off. Eh, not a whole lot came off because this is a really good roller. <laughs> so the cheaper rollers are going to come off more. So to answer your question, it really depends on 
kind of what you're looking to get out of it. I, I personally like kind of the medium to low, not the cheapest, but I, I don't overspend. They have three levels. So would yeah, I go middle, middle. middle. Yeah, I'd go middle. Yep, and I'm going to teach you how to save money on all of your supplies from now on too. We'll get to that at the end. Tricks that hopefully there's no spies from the industry over here. Um, okay, so for today, let's use the uh, the uh, half inch. Okay, have you guys ever seen where <laughs> you see every time you go into the room, you see the outline of the wall? That's because somebody tried to do every single wall at the same time. Don't do that. So what you want to do is one wall at a time because you want all your paint to be on there as even as possible at one time to dry at the same time at as close to the same frequency as possible so they kind of set up together and they dry together. So you want to make sure you do, you know, let's say we're going to do this wall and there's not one open spot in this whole place so I, I'm going to have to just use my, my pretend wall here. Um, so basically you get your brush out, obviously this is some pretty straightforward stuff, but I highly recommend keeping your case because brushes we don't throw away. Buy a good brush because that makes a huge difference. You don't want to be uh, working along and all of a sudden you lose a bristle. You, you will lose bristles even on the best brushes, but I recommend buying a really good brush. The best. How much was that brush? Um, probably 10 bucks. Uh, but I bought it on my account, so probably, I'm not afraid to spend $15 on a brush. Um, it, it also, the, the price of the brush also depends on how big it is, too. So, um, like when we're doing exteriors, you know, it's not uncommon to have a big four-inch brush. Personally, I like angle. Some people like half. It's all what you're used to. I like to, I'm a really good at cutting. That was something I've always was really good at. I'm really good at working really hard for an hour. Eight hours, not so much. So I got to be fast in that hour or else it's a waste of time. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, right, I, I like the angled sash, um, but I would buy a good one. Make sure you save your, your uh, box here because it helps keep the brush. And um, when you're done cleaning it, you know, it, it's kind of nice to keep it in there. So I personally, I like doing that. So basically what you want to do is do the whole, you want to do all your cutting and we don't take, I mean, what I would do is go at a pace so you don't have to tape your, your edges or your ceiling because you'll get a much better line and it'll go a lot faster for you because you can't tape a popcorn. It's really hard to tape a ceiling and to tape a line without it bleeding, which I bet you can do a better job going slow with a brush than you can taping and letting it bleed. So, okay, so you do your ceiling, right? Use enough paint that you can, right? You get to the bottom, then you do it here. Like being systematic makes you faster automatically. You know, you across the whole, I mean, say you have a 10 foot wall or a 12 foot wall and then nothing all around it. Would you go across your whole 10, 12 foot wall at the top of that or would you do just where you're going to go? Well, I would do the whole wall. Yeah, I would go from edge to edge. So if I'm painting this, this room, I would go, um, obviously it's a little exaggerated, but I'd start in me. I'm a left to right. That's how I read. That's how I think. So I start in the upper right corner. I go the top, the, uh, across the top. Then I come down, then I go back over there, then I come down, then I come across the bottom. And I got a bad rotator, so that just hurt. Um, but I'm right-handed, so it's, I'm screwed. So you basically go, right, you do your, your, basically your frame around the whole room. One wall at a time? One wall at a time. Even though it dries, then? It will dry, there's no way around it. Yep, because you can't get to the corner with your, what's that? That makes it easy to get, like, you know, yeah. Doing three feet and then doing a roll in. Yes. Oh, I highly recommend doing the whole thing at once. Um, but you, you know, you want it. That's why you stick to one wall. You know, you do your whole wall because I'm going to teach you how to roll really fast. So basically, when you're using your your roller, this is the best thing you can do is buy an extension for it, right? Because especially somebody who's you know, not six feet tall or not six four or whatever. I mean, you know, some of my guys don't use a ladder ever. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but regardless, if you have you know, an extension roller, you, you pretty much don't have to use a ladder anymore for an interior because not, you know, even a 14 foot, you start getting good. I mean, you can really move along. All right, so here's, this is how I was taught and this is how I teach it and this is what I think works the best. Yeah, part. sure. When you're cutting, doing the cutting up, there, how wide yeah. one? Enough where I can get the roller to it. So about an inch, uh, about two inches. 
you don't really have to worry. It's kind of like you, you just got to make sure that you can get, you can cover the gap with your roller. And also that would also make a difference on, you know, how, you know, because if you've got a bigger diameter roller, that can affect it too. Just, to, just enough. And you also don't want to, you know, you want to make sure, like let's say you put too much paint on, you want to make sure you brush it out because you don't want a big gap up there because that's because this is going to put it on pretty thin. You want to make sure it's as consistent as possible. So again, you've got a drop cloth so you don't have to worry about getting paint all over. Watch your feet. But um, I, when I'm doing interiors, I use a tray like this and a liner and then I throw away the liner. I don't try to save the liner, I try to save this. And, um, or some people use a bucket. I use a bucket outside. I never use a tray outside. So right, you get it nice and even. Then what I do, you can start with an M, but I like a W. You go you down like a W like this, okay? Up to the middle, down, and then you have your W, right? Okay, then I do an M. So I start at the bottom left. I go up to the middle. Yeah, okay, I got that right. Okay, down like an M, and then, right? So I basically, I'm filling in, you know, my W. Okay, then I go back to the left. I always finish one way, right? So now I've got enough paint on there. So I might put a little more on here, but I've got enough paint where I don't have to go up and down anymore. Now I go down in one smooth motion. That's why I use an extension. So I don't have to go up here, get down off the ladder, come down because I want it smooth, right? So I'm gonna go all the way down in one motion. If I need more paint, I will, don't get me wrong. I mean, you gotta put enough paint on there. But then I take this spot and then I go halfway over. I do the same thing. Then I go halfway over, you know, so I'm, I'm really putting another two coats on. It's not technically two coats because it hasn't dried, but basically that way I'm, I'm basically creating really small strips that are going to help, you know, that are going to help, um, they're going to help as you, you know, you're standing over here and you see that big wall, you're not going to see all the, you know, you're not going to, you know how sometimes you go to a, a house that's not painted as well and you're like, holy crap, that looks terrible. <laughs> you know, and, and usually that's why, because it's not smooth, it's not even. So you basically do you know, this much at a time, right? Floor to ceiling. Floor to ceiling. Yep, floor to ceiling. What's with the W and the M? I mean, why do you, why do, you do a W and an M? Because it gets a lot of paint on. Um, but then you paint right that's over. That's a great question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you could. Well. You know, I'm going to kind of make this up, but logically speaking, perhaps if you're going only up and down, only vertical, that might affect, you know, runs and streaks. It, in a way, it's kind of like how I was taught, and I have no reason to do it other way. Um, perhaps, you know, you've got, because everything is riv you know, driven by stipple, right? It's a good way to get a lot of paint on. And so now you've got stipple going this way. You got, well, when you do ceilings, you go this way and this way, so you don't see runs. So that could be a part of it. Um, but to be completely honest, it was how I was taught, and it works really well. Okay. You probably I read to do that, but I didn't know why. Yeah, you probably could do it all vertical, up and down. The main thing is how you finish. Getting the paint on probably isn't as important as how you finish it. And it's nice and even, right? Instead of going up and then down, now you got more paint in the middle. So, well, it's kind of like you're double when you're going over that M and W. You're, yep. It's a double coat on those areas. Yeah, you're kind of get, yeah, you're 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 mixing the paint in between, and then you're just boom, boom. So it works really really well. The finish stroke that you're putting on, yeah. I think you said it. You go up at the top, you go all the way down to the all the way down. Okay, and then halfway over and all the way all the way down. Never up again. Once you commit to finishing it, you never make this type of thing. Back. Not anymore. Just a one-time, a one-time deal. Yep, you're going, you're going all the way. So that's after you got a good coat on the wall. That's after you got enough to do. I, you, yeah. That's pretty good. So you want you're 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 done. So you want to just kind of even everything out. Well, I wouldn't say it's even a. You know, when you got the M and the W, it still isn't fully coated. It doesn't. Yeah, it, you still have gaps, 
but there's enough pain on the wall now where, and, and you'll get the hang of it. You know, once you see, once you do it a few times. Yeah, I mean, I probably did it on four walls and then I was automatically an expert painter. So, I mean, it's like, it, it, it's, once you do it a couple times, it's like, oh yeah, it works. And it goes fast. Cause like, I mean, I essentially just painted that, you know, I could have probably painted this whole wall in that amount of time we were talking because you're really moving. I mean, you're like, boom, 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 boom. Right? I mean, just when you use a lot of paint and you want to use enough paint, then it doesn't scream. That's another thing too, is once you're, once you stop using enough paint, you'll kind of hear, you go, you don't want that. You want to get more paint on there. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people let it dry out too fast. And it's okay. Yeah. Don't, sp yeah, don't spread it. Because the other thing too, is when you go back and you're doing your finish coats, it's going to, it's also going to continue smoothing it out. So you, you'll, you'll find, you, you'll kind of get a balance for how much, and that just comes with time. But you know, once you start doing it the same way all the time, you get a really good system going and it's okay to take breaks. Just make sure you cover your paint. That's what prevents paint boogers. Technical term for when you see little spots of paint, which is basically just micro small pieces of paint that dried along the can because you didn't shut the can right away, or you leave the roller hanging out here while you go grab the phone. A good way to keep phone, you know, um, paint off your phone is just don't answer your phone when you're painting. <laughs> Take a look at a painter's phone, it ain't so pretty. Doesn't look so cool. Um, saran wrap is what I recommend. Some people put their, you know, um, their, their um, equipment in the fridge while they take a break. You could do that. Um, anything to slow the paint down. But the point is, is you want to do as much as you can while you're painting. And that way it doesn't take eight weeks to do a room, you know, or, or you know, or, or, or a day, right? You, uh, typically speaking, uh, one painter could uh, paint three rooms, two coats in one day. I've seen an entire townhome get painted by one painter in a day, a long day, a 12 hour day. I mean, when you do it every day, it goes fast. And once you follow a system, it goes fast. So, but the key is keep moving and then cover it with saran wrap. That's what I recommend. Um, plastic bag, same deal? Plastic bag would work. Yep, plastic bag would work, yeah. Just something to seal the air in because that's just like a paint can. When a paint can's sealed, there's no air coming in or out. But you wanna, you wanna try to not leave anything in for a couple hours because it'll dry. And then you get little tiny boogers on the bottom, then the boogers get on the wall, and then your wall doesn't, then your wall's full of boogers. <laughs> the, the other kind. What do you do if you're doing a, a bigger project in a bunch of rooms or whatever, yep. and you're gonna have to do it over a couple of days and yeah. or come back in two, three days and do another or something? Can you can you put the brush in or the whole thing in the freezer or is that nuts? Well, personally, um, I wouldn't. Well, I would never put it in the freezer because paint doesn't work very well once it's frozen. That's why you don't leave your paint in the garage because it'll freeze. It just changes the, you know, the makeup of the paint. Just the brush or the roller or something. I would clean, first of all, because I spend a lot of money on a brush, I clean out my brushes. I don't throw them away. So af after the end of the day, uh, well, there's a couple things you can do. First of all, you want to go one wall at a time. So even if it does take a couple days, at least you get a nice finish. Right? You don't want to do your whole house and cut it. You see that all the time. I see that all the time. You know, the whole house is cut and you're like, all I got to do is go back and roll it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, it's not going to look as good. So, so, okay, in the corner. Yep. Same so doing this wall. But I guess I always get both, the, both walls. You can do that. In the corner. Or it sounds like you're saying just cut in the one side that you're going to Personally, and, and I, okay. It all depends on your speed too, because I do have some painters that will cut the whole room, you know, because they're fast. I mean, they'll just they'll cut the whole room in, you know, 30 minutes. So, kind of depends on on kind of how quickly it basically how quickly can you get to that wall, and paint dries in 30 minutes to the touch. So it, you know, it happens pretty fast. So um, also have a have a rag on you because you never know why you'll need it, but you'll need it eventually. So, um, okay, so where were we? Good questions. Um, okay, we covered that, covered that, applying paint to the wall. So how to pick out paint? Should we go there? Would that be, I think that's where a lot of people get hung up is how do I pick the right paint? Who makes the best paint? Everybody. Oh, yes. Uh, 
Yes, I will cover that. Oh, yes, back to your question. I'm sorry. Um, yes, if you, what I do is I clean out a brush at the end of the day. And because my brush is never really, you know, dried out very, you know, a lot, it's pretty easy to clean. Um, when, you're, when you're cleaning it out in the basement sink, what I do is I basically bend the brush, wash it out, and then I turn it over and bend it. That seems to get the paint out the fastest. And I just make sure it's as, I mean, sometimes it takes 10 minutes to clean out a brush. You can use a wire brush. You know, always go one way. Don't go like this, because then that ruins your brush. Um, I never put paint up into, I never want, it's kind of fun <laughs> to, you know, turn your paint brush upside down, hit the water into it, and you see all the paint coming out. You think it's being cleaned, but the reality is, if paint dries up in here, it's not really that big of a deal. You don't need to get the paint out of here, because in a way, I guess it could be glue to keep everything together, but I just make sure that what really matters is clean, and I make sure that that happens. So if it's going to be, you know, four hours before I get back, I'll actually clean my brush, wrap it in saran wrap. Though saran wrap is, is the best best way. Give me a clean brush. Uh, no clean brush. Once it's clean, it's clean. There's no paint on it. Then I put it back in the. I let it dry. There's really no secret to how to get it to dry. I usually just shake it out really hard until my shoulder starts hurting, and then I put it in here. If you just clean it out with just plain warm water? Water. Yeah, well, if I'm using latex, which the majority of people would be using latex in their house, I use, yeah you know, water. No, yeah. Oh, and the other thing, too, is you can also just, let's say you're doing uh, different colors, right? And you're, you don't want to clean up now because you've got the groove going, the good music is playing on the radio, you finish your, ro your blue room, then you go into your yellow room, just throw it in water. Just go and let it soak, you know, for 30 minutes. That'll help, you know, save you a lot of time, too. Yeah, so letting it soak isn't going to hurt. Clean it right away, right then. Well, that's a way to, to put it off, absolutely. Yeah, if you get... Say you could just dump, dump it with water and then go use it on this other color. No, no, no. That'd be awesome. <laughs> then you're going to need two $20 brushes, <laughs> right? So, um, um, any other questions about applying the paint? Yeah. Um, do you use a nylon or a horsehair brush, or what's the best type of brush? To I use nylon. Nylon. This is a china bristle, bristle, I believe. I honestly, I just grabbed it off the shelf. You know, I wasn't paying attention to, let's see, what is it made out of? I think, yeah, this is actually an oil brush. It's probably, yeah, china bristle. China bristle for oil. I never use this for latex. I mean, it usually tells you right on the, you know, if you know what you're using, then you just basically. It's good for latex. So. I use all nylon. Yep, 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 yep. Um, you know, and the, and the better ones, like if you're doing exterior, there's kind of like wave technology on some of the brushes that helps hold the paint because you want a lot of paint when you're painting an exterior. Um, so I usually recommend about a two and a half to a three inch at the most. Just kind of depends on your experience level. You know, if you, if you can really handle a lot of paint, then you go with a bigger brush. So um, good question though. Yeah, you want to make sure you're buying the brush for what you're using because this, th you'll never get latex out of this brush. It will dry so fast, it just doesn't, because it's soaking it in, it's soaking in the latex, it's really counter, counterproductive for you to be using a, an oil brush for a latex product. Make sure you stir it. If you buy your paint today, it's probably good for a few days without stirring it. it they really shake it up pretty good. Um, but, you know, if it goes out more than a few days, they say a week, but I, a few days, I like to stir it. I mean, what's the harm, you know, the, these are free. And then after you're done using them, then you can write, broccoli or carrots or whatever and just put them in your garden and really that's where I get these <laughs> I got a whole box of them at home so um, okay one wall at a time got it um, oh when you're done right let's say you got extra paint in your whatever you're using use a strainer yeah no, we don't just dump it because there will be boogers. And we, the less boogers, the better. So basically, you pour it into here before you pour it back into the can. Because this is kind of like, this is, this is the home. This is the paint's home. When you put paint back in it, first of all, you're, you're protecting you know, the paint that's in there so it stays nice. And then, uh, oh, these things too. You know, if they give them out at the paint store, they should. You know, it's just handy because if you use... If you use like a screwdriver, sometimes it can kind of mess up the way it seals at the bottom. So you kind of want to keep this part nice and clean. But essentially, you've got, you know, you pour the paint in here and you find a way to get it in there and you get to keep the crap behind. And you'll be amazed how much stuff is, you know, how many boogers are left in your strainer. So I recommend one of these if you've got a multi-day project.
<laughs> well, eventually. I mean, they're, they're like a buck, I think. Um, so like, well, I guess what you could do, just make sure you remember which side is in and out. Because once it gets paint, you can you kind of, you know, you just don't want to go inside out. You could, I suppose, yeah, you know what, what the guys do is they'll just rinse it out really, really good, as good as they can, but there's still going to be stuff junk inside. And then you just basically, you can use these for a while, you know, until they're completely plugged, you know, as long as it's usable. But at, at some point, you just throw it away. It's okay. Just let it go. Any type of strainer. Yeah, there's, there's the, I use these because these are cheap. You know, they, and they do the job. You can buy the really fancy ones that are kind of like a site, you know, like a, they've got, you know, they're, they're plastic, but, you know, I can get the same job done with this. Um, so, so how do you pick out paint? Who has the best paint? Well, it depends on who's selling it. You know? um, Hershfields, Sherwin-Williams, Home Depot, Bear, Lowe's, they all make really good paint. It all depends on how much you want to pay for that paint. So, and every, there's all sorts of levels. And the most expensive paint isn't necessarily the best paint. Because there are two factors in how expensive the, the paint is. What's, what's in it, basically? Is it high quality stuff? So, so then when you're, let's say you're comparing uh, high quality paint across the board. Okay, you got a flat gallon of high quality paint. If you go from flat to eggshell, to satin, to semi-gloss, the components in that gallon become more and more expensive because of the raw materials. And as you go up, it also becomes more durable. Because if you think about a car, a really shiny car doesn't fade. And if you get paint on a shiny car, a red car, you, you, know, you can wipe it off really, really easily because it's, it's a sheen and like it reflects sunlight because that sheen level protects the paint job, so to speak. So, so that's why people use satin or semi-gloss on their trim or, on their, uh, or in their kitchens or their bathrooms. Another factor is um, uh, you know, durability for washing. As you go up in sheen, it becomes more washable. Flat paint, uh, let's say you have the highest quality flat paint versus a low quality flat paint. Don't plan on cleaning the flat paint in the low quality. In fact, I would say like a high quality flat paint would be more durable than an eggshell low quality paint. Um, so you kind of have to decide what, and the nice thing about flat paint is that you could touch it up really easily. And if it's flat, it doesn't reflect sunlight or light at all. So you can, you're going to see less imperfections. So if you got a satin finish, well, I mean, we recommend for interiors, unless you've got kids running around or pets or all sorts of um, animals, <laughs> one way or the other, I guess, um, you know, touching the walls, that we recommend going with flat because it's going to look the best. And you step up from there. But you definitely don't want to go semi-gloss because semi-gloss is going to really affect the way it looks. Um, unless you're doing a kitchen or a bathroom because there's a lot of water. So, um, so why, why does it take eight coats or six coats to do red? Or really, really dark blue? Um, in paint, there's additives. There's the solvent, which is for lack of better words, oil or latex or waterborne. There's all sorts of different types and paint is quite complicated, but we don't have time to cover that. So the solvent, whether it's latex or whether it's oil, then the resin and then the pigment. The resin determines the quality level of the paint. Higher quality materials, better paint. The, the pigment determines the color. That's how you can have literally thousands of colors for the same three bases of paint. So when you have deep colors like dark blue and red, you need more pigment, right? Okay, well pigment doesn't actually make a difference in making something cover. You know, the, the, the pigment doesn't really stick to the wall, it needs the resin. So if you've got a, a paint can that has very little tint and has a lot of the good stuff, it's gonna cover really, really well. So if you've got a lot of red, you basically have kind of weak paint, for lack of better words. Now, in the higher quality paint, they're able to use less resin but more, and more pigment, but still get higher performance. But what I would highly recommend doing is, personally, I like the smaller stores where 
you know, the guy, you know, it's, it's not just somebody who knows how to sell the paint or knows how to somebody how to mix it, but they know how to help you buy the paint. And I can also help too, because I mean, it's, we realize that not everybody hires a painter when they want to paint their house. And everyone loves to be an expert at something. So I love to be an expert. If you have any questions, just give me a call or shoot me an email. I'd be more than happy to help you. Someday, if you want to hire a painter, I'd love to be that too. But, at, but for the meantime, I'd love to help you out in any way I can. Um, I would, uh, um, you kind of need to ask. So right, the most, like the, what, what you want for interior paint is that buttery finish is what it's called. So I'll take Sherwin-Williams for example. The cashmere line is the best for a buttery finish. It's not the most expensive. It's durable, but not the most durable. And in that line, the duration is the highest quality. It's really the most durable. It's about $10 more per gallon, but it actually doesn't have the nicest finish. Because you've got to decide why are you painting and what's important to you. If it's a kid's room, if it's a bathroom, duration is pretty important. Or platinum ceramics, or you know, at Hirschfield's. Or um, when somebody says there's primer in the paint, there's primer in every paint. <laughs> so this primer paint in one is kind of, kind of marketing. <laughs> Actually, it's all marketing, because in interior paint, adhesion isn't the issue, is it? Have you ever, I mean, you've got to really screw it up to see paint peeling from a wall, right? You, you know, there's no sun, there's no winter, there's no rain inside a house, so adhesion isn't really an issue. Um, and here's the tip that I want to make sure I get in. If you want to buy paint on my account, I'm not even 100% sure if it's legal for me to tell you, but you can go to Hirschfields or Sherwin-Williams and tell them you're my customer because you guys are all my customer now and say, I'm going to buy the paint. I need to get Eric's discount or, you know, True North, take my card and you can get my paint. You'll have to pay for it. You can't charge it to my account, but <laughs> don't try it. But um, <laughs> we catch that pretty quick. But um, I mean, we've got, you know, we've got a lot of paint being purchased every single day. That, you know, just go ahead and tell them you're my customer and you need to get my paint. And it actually helps us. It means it's, it's no bother for us, and it helps us because the more paint that's bought through our account, the cheaper it is for you next year, <laughs> right? So because we're, buying, we're higher volume, more people are connected to True North Painting. So it's a little tip. I'm pretty sure it's legal. I wouldn't, if I knew it wasn't, I wouldn't tell you. But I mean, um, that's, and plus they want you to buy the paint. I mean, they want you to be a happy customer to keep going back and going back. But usually, if you're using a contractor's discount, you get more paint for the buck. You know, so you could spend 30 bucks to get a $50 paint. You could spend 20 bucks and get the $30 paint. You know, I mean, when we do ceilings, we use the cheapest paint possible because it's dead flat. It, you know, and then they say, oh, you need a drywall primer? You don't need a drywall primer. That just helps the paint company make more money. You just use paint because in the interior, you just, you, you'll, let's say you got fresh drywall. You just do a coat of the paint and then you do your two finish coats. Good thing I thought of that. Okay, when you're doing interiors, you always do two coats flat out no matter what. If you're going white on white, blue on blue, same color or the same color, because in interior, the surface is flat. So you get in the stipple, remember we talked about the stipple with the roller? The stipple drives the, the, how it looks. So to get that even stipple, you want to use two coats no matter what. And because, besides, I told you how to do it so fast, you'll be so happy. To, you'll be having so much fun doing painting. You'll be like, oh, you know what? I had two coats. I'm going to go for the third coat, maybe even four. So back to the red. No matter what, red's tough or dark blue because you got a lot of pigment. So the way to get, let's say you got this white room. If you try to put the red paint on the yellow, that yellow is going to bleed through for five coats. I can almost guarantee it. So what you do is at that point, you go with either a gray primer or a gray paint, because remember, gray paint is gray primer for inserts for all practical purposes. You want to use, you want to set it back to gray because gray isn't going to bleed through red very easily. Yellow, white, they're going to bleed through really fast. And then the other thing too is, that's where you know we talk about how it depends on where you go and it depends on what you buy. I tell you, and I won't say who, but some companies have really high-end paint. But when it comes to trying to do a red, they're terrible. So that's where I could probably help you out. If you're going to go red, I'm going to steer you to one company. And if you want to do this, then I would steer you to another company because we know, you know, that some companies make really good enamel, some companies make really good, you know. So those those are little tricks that we just wouldn't be able to cover today. But um, so setting it back to gray if you're going to do a really deep color, deep base. So, um, any questions about that concept? That's covering the, the red or putting red on? Both. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you want to get red? You want to get rid of red? You kind of need to get, you got to kind of set it back to neutral. Is it worth with the bear paint CK, $10 more to get the, the enamel? Is it, is it worth paying the extra 10 bucks generally? Well, I'm going to answer this as best I can and as uh, PC as I can. I've used, I've used bear twice in 10 years, so I don't know a whole lot about bear. Okay, so there's uh, other paints that I like at Home Depot and Lowe's um, better. I, I like Glidden. Glidden's owned by ICI. ICI is actually the largest painting company in the world. I don't use a lot of it because I, because I like having that really close relationship with a small retail store. I have nothing. I buy from Home Depot and Lowe's all the time. I just don't buy my paint there because I can't get I can't get 100 gallons in two hours, you know, and I can't get, you know, they they can't really serve my needs very well. Um, so I, and, but a lot of my customers will get their colors there and I'll just take it to where I know I can get the paint that they need at the right store. So I typically go back and forth from Sherwin-Williams and Hirschfields to get what I need. So I, but that, the extra, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for durability, the answer is yes. Because usually those high-end paints with the primer in it, first of all, the primer in it just, you can let that phrase go out the window because they all have primer in it. They've been doing it for years. It's just a way to help sell paint. But the higher end paints have better resin, less resin to pigment ratio. Um, you know, and I don't, I don't want to um, promote one supplier over the other. So if you have a specific question, just shoot me an email. I'll tell you where to go. Yeah, because some are better than others. So, you know, it's all equal. But Hirschfeld has great paint and they have bad paint. Sherwin Williams has great paint and they have bad paint. It just depends on what you're using. Um, What's the difference between, big difference between exterior and interior? Exterior, you can usually do red in one or two coats because it's a really thick paint. The reason why I, I don't typically recommend exterior for an interior, is there's a lot of mildecides and a lot of stuff additives in the paint that you don't necessarily want. You know how we try to get low VOC nowadays because in California it gives people cancer. I, I mean, actually, it, it, I meant to kind of say that. <laughs> well, I'm trying to be PC, but it's, well, no, it is an important thing in paint, actually. That's not, that's not a complete joke. But um, you got to use the best paint for the process. And sometimes you got to use, you know, if you want your paint, to, my job is to make paint stick. And I'll use the best product I need. In an interior setting, you can use low and no VOC products, and they will work just as well. Um, so interior, it's actually, we try to use as low VOC as possible. However, why did I bring that up? I know there's a, there's a different reason. The, fa the fact that something's no VOC is pretty hard to get to because the pigment's full of VOC. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you got this beautiful paint and then you add a whole bunch of tint to it. Except for Benjamin Moore, they've got no VOC to toners. Um, so we covered latex, we covered oil. Oh, volatile organic compounds. Basically, it's a pollutant. Um, it's, um, you know, you run your car for 20 seconds, you've polluted the earth way more than you will ever in your life painting. So in perspective, everything helps, right? And I'm, I'm a big, I, I love going green. Everything helps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, the, the, they say it uh, leeches from walls years and years and years later, but, you know, there's a lot of things in our world that, that are far more effective. Um, so, um, so use our account if you want to. Um, let us know how we can help. We really enjoy it, and we hope you do too, because, I mean, painting is, like I said, you know, Rockstar wasn't really working out. I figured that out about 12. Um, stumbled on painting, and I, I just really like seeing that instant gratification. You take something, you, you make it really nice pretty quick, right? Does anybody have any last-minute questions or anything that we haven't covered? Yeah. We have covered this before, but so we've got a oh, Thank you for asking. And then it's been terrible to me. When you have, you know, different color. Yep, I'm gonna, yeah, great question. I was supposed to cover it and I forgot. So, popcorn ceilings, the big craze is getting rid of them because HGTV tells you that you cannot sell your house without, with popcorn ceilings, which is absurd because you spend a couple grand getting rid of your popcorn ceiling on a $200, $1,000 house, like what's, you know, like people won't, they walk into the house and they're like, popcorn ceilings, can't get this house. It's like, what? <laughs> like, how about you, 
uh, offer them about $80,000 less for the house and remove the popcorn for about a thousand bucks. Okay, so how do you paint popcorn ceilings? If you need to paint them, like my house, I got popcorn ceilings, I hate them, but I'm not gonna change it because I'm from North Dakota, I'm frugal, I'm not gonna change my house just because somebody else tells me I need to. But if I ever did, I would use my company to do it. So, because <laughs> my wife, she does all the painting in my house for the walls. Ceilings, I'll hire that out. I know people. So, um, okay, so when you're painting popcorn, the problem with it is if you're using, because popcorn is basically mud, water, and CO2. So as soon as, um, there might be some more technical terms for that, but it's basically air and water and mud. So if you put water to it, it falls apart, right? If you have a water damage from the ceiling, it kind of gets yucky, right? Well, the same thing happens with paint. If you are rolling the paint into the popcorn, it basically activates the, the dehydrated popcorn texture. So it comes off really, really easily. So if you're gonna paint your popcorn ceilings, you really need to spray it. And if you really need to spray your popcorn ceilings, you should really consider hiring a professional because it's not gonna usually turn out very good unless you spray every day. Just like ladders. Ladders are really, 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 really safe safer than scaffolding if you do it every day. So now the big thing now is removing popcorn. So this is like shameful promotion, but typically we can, we can remove a popcorn ceiling and put knockdown, which is this product right here, and paint it for like 300 bucks. Why? Because we do it every day. It's really easy. We plastic the room, we remove the popcorn, and the easy way to do that is the hard way, elbow grease. You just remove it. You just roll up the sleeves and get the popcorn down and then you put your knockdown up or you can go flat it's a little easier to go popcorn because you or uh, knockdown because well for one this is really architecturally what people want nowadays I guess for now um, but um, usually there's a little bit of skim coating involved if the popcorn once the popcorn has been painted it becomes significantly more difficult to get rid of it later because you're sealing it in um, if you're gonna roll it you want to roll it roll it with oil and a mask and then it will, then you can roll it and it'll seal, but it's just, you know, I mean, paint a, we can paint a 12 by 12 room for like 125 bucks if we're doing, you, you know, the more we do, the cheaper it gets, but, or hire somebody else. I mean, I'm not trying to say we're the only painting company because there's thousands of them. We've been around since the caveman days. So, does that answer your question? No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. I even threw in shameless promotion in there and I, not yet. yeah. But, um, so when you're painting a wall and you're, it depends on who did your popcorn. You know, if there is a straight edge to be had, then you just follow the edge. But if the pop with what with the with 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 sponge? brush, we only use a brush. We do not use any fancy. Those are for those are for um, you know they the paint store wants you to buy that product. We, we use a brush. It's the only way to get a straight line truly straight. Oh, I got another tip for you. Um, so there isn't an easy answer for that because it really depends on the room. Some people do, you know, some people put their popcorn up well. Some builders, usually the popcorn is to cover up really bad workmanship. So then, okay, when you are putting your, your tape up, right, on your edge, you put it down, right? And then a lot of people will use something that won't burn the wall, but they run it. This is a theory. I, I've seen it work sometimes, and some, don't count on it 100% of the time, but it, there is some evidence that it works. You run it real fast, and it melts the wax on the tape, and it creates a better seal. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, but the point is, whenever you're going painting up against something with tape, don't goop it on. I mean, because it will bleed if you put enough paint you know, there. So um, we don't tape the ceiling. We don't use any devices. We just do it with the, do it with the brush. Steady hand, yeah, and take our time, you know. So, but we don't use any of the funky devices. I mean, it's just, we stick to the caveman days and just paint it with a brush or our finger if we have to. So, um, I bet I should have been done about five minutes ago. I could talk about painting all day. <laughs> so now, I was at Richfields yesterday, and they, I just bought, there was a new product, frog something. Frog tape. Yeah, is yep. that better than masking tape? Depends on how long it's going to take for you to do it. Um, you know, so like frog tape will stay on longer and it won't leave a residue. So, and if you guys have any other questions, feel free to grab a can koozie, a pen, and a card. We'll be, we're going to be downstairs. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions offline because I love talking about painting. <laughs> so, um, anything else, real quick? Can you come with asbestos in the popcorn Not typically. 
lot of times we're sealing it in or we're removing it and then it really depends on the house I mean a lot of a lot of the work we do is it really from the 75 on um, and uh, it's a great question, but I don't have a specific answer because it really depends on the situation. Do you, do you test it first before we start We don't. We typically don't. Um, if we we typically don't, if it's a newer house, if we have, uh, if we suspect that there is asbestos in the popcorn, then we will get it tested. Yep. Usually, it's a discussion the homeowner is concerned about, and then we find out at that time. Uh, but it really depends on the situation. So, um, so thank you. <laughs>